Hello, how are you guys doing today? This is Bruce Lombardo and welcome to my YouTube website. All right, some of you people here have known me for quite a while. Some of you have actually sat down and gamed with me. Others who I've met, we've shaken hands. Others just through Facebook or through reputation. And uh, just that is the wonders of the internet and the new age that we live in. I'm here talking to you today because I've got a book review. We're doing a book review on something called Shadow Raiders. It's a new book by Margaret Weiss and Robert Krams. And if I mispronounce his name or anything, I want to tell you that Robert or uh, Tom Brokaw has made a career of mispronouncing things during a newscast. So, and if you remember, Ed Sullivan did the same thing. It's just the nature of what happens, my people. What we're doing is we have this piece here, which is a advanced copy, is 544 page piece. All right. You're looking at around a $25 MSRP, going to be a little lower on Amazon and various websites. I'll give you a discount for the hardcover re-release or pre-release or pre-order, buying it when it's hot on the shelf. And what I'm going to tell you is that right now, if you like Margaret Weiss, if you're predisposed to, re to read anything that she's ever put her name on, including her role-playing products from Margaret Weiss Productions or from her early days at TSR, in between those two points, if you need to know anything because you liked it before, then I'm just going to tell you go out and buy it. It's a four and a half star review. All right, to the nitty gritty. <clears throat> Back of the book talks about when Lord Captain Stefano di Gulchin, formerly of the Dragon Brigade, and his friends who form the Cadre of the Lost are hired by the pow powerful Countess de Majorelaine, advisor to the King of Rosia. They have no hint of the dangers that lie ahead. Their mission is to find a royal armory journeyman who has mysteriously vanished along with an invention that could revolutionize warfare. The Countess fears the invention may fall into the hands of Freya, the enemy realm that has long sought to topple Rosia. Always in need of money, Stefano and his friends undertake what they think is an easy job, only to discover they are being dogged by spies and assassins. Meanwhile, Father Jacob Northrup, a priest of the feared Arcanum, and his knight protector Sir Andrew Martell are dispatched to investigate the massacre of a hundred nuns at the Abbey of St. Agnes. Stefano and his friends take to the skies in their airship, the Cloudhopper, still on the trail of the journeyman. Their route takes them near the Abbey of St. Agnes, where the Cloudhopper comes under attack by what appears to be demons riding giant bats. Stefano teams with Father Jacob and Sir Andrew and a dragon from his old brigade to fight the hellish forces. After the battle, one question's on everybody's mind. Are these demons sent by the evil one? Is this the apocalypse? Schemes and tricks, lies and intrigues culminate in an exciting chase through the skies. It comes to a shocking climax where the friends and foes alike are caught up in the unexpected and terrifying conclusion. Alright, on my second read through this now. I've had the book for about three weeks and I've got to tell you that this is probably the most ambitious book that Margaret Weiss has ever put her name on and Robert Krams, I'm really sorry. I've never read anything of yours before. But I'm going to have some items ordered for me through our local Barnes & Noble. And when I receive uh, my my duty station down at Corpus Christi, my new permanent record, I'll be making sure to read your previous material. Let me tell you that right now, this book here is the slowest book I've read probably in a long time to start going. The first... 70 pages or so are slow. They're very deliberate. They're very well paced. Don't take that as a negative. People need to understand this is a 500 plus page book. This is something that when it gets going, it could really tire out the reader if it would not have done that. This is the best pacing I've seen probably. It's an example of literary ownership. I mean, in all honesty, Margaret Weiss' background, she was with TSR back in the early 80s. Her and Tracy Hickman were under assignment to write a series of novels based on what they pretty much did at the table around polyhedral dye, pens and paper, pencils and paper. What they made was the foremost example of gaming fiction, the Chronicles trilogy for Dragonlance. Ever since then, guys like myself, for many years, we're going on two and a half, three decades now, we've been buying her books. And I have to say that with maybe the exception of the Dark Sword trilogy, which was another Weiss-Hickman collaboration, this is exactly the type of excellence that you should come to expect. 
I will tell you right now that as you're introduced to the cloud hopper and how the world works, the breath of God, the magical resource, which the power mad theocracy holds sway over and the popular culture accepts the fact that things are as they are and should secrets become public domain and people realize exactly what magic truly is and who can, cannot use it. The secrets of it, how the constructs are actually utilized, the sigils, the triggering effects. If those things became public domain in this world, things would collapse. And Freya has been a long time saber rattler. From the exposition that she gives, from the excellent dialogue, the narrative, and I hate to say that this is a she book because Robert did a lot of work with this as well. His name is as much on here as hers. These two people have written probably the finest book of 2011, and I'm going to say that hands down. I read upwards of 20 novels a year. What we're looking at is easily one of the most anticipated series to be coming out in our near future. And the sad thing is that now that I've read this, I have to reread it, and I'll probably reread it twice a year until the new book comes out, because this is volume one of the Dragon Brigade. Margaret Weiss has let it be known off of her Facebook site that there is a 60-page synopsis for the sequel. <clears throat> Most of us people that are involved with any sort of synopsis or any sort of literary work have read that whenever you're dealing with a synopsis, usually three to five pages will suffice. This is a project that is going to be receiving a lot of media attention, and for very good reason. People that remembered the wonderful Deathgate cycle, which it sounds worse than what it is. I mean, let's face it, Deathgate doesn't exactly roll off the tongue and say, put this in middle school libraries, but it should be. It's a seven series piece. Uh, everybody should read it. Anybody who likes a great book, just put it on your nightstand. Anyway, this here, Shadow Raiders, is easily one of the best books I've read in my life. I have to say that, back up to her old tricks again, Margaret Weiss weaves a wonderful tale along with Robert Crams. They have built a convincing world with a logical and profound reason as to why things operate as they do. When you are world building as they have, and she's been part of a number of pieces throughout literary history, and I must say that she's just not in gaming fiction. She is truly a masterful writer. She worked with Don Perrin. She worked with, with Tracy Hickman. She's worked with other greats in the field. And what we have is a book that I can't speak to you enough nearly about the accolades, and I haven't even brushed up on exactly what we have as far as details of the book. But you have to know that the church is very secretive about exactly how the breath of God operates, which is a magical resource. It utilizes pretty much utility in everything in this world. And they've kept the crafting secrets pretty close to, close to hand. Now Stefano's uh, first mate, Rodrigo, will easily capture some of your hearts out there and he will probably be known for years to come as one of her most, I would say, favorite new characters. I would say he eclipses Fizban in my uh, my aspect. In, in my examples that I've read from what this book is and from what I've talked with her about, Rodrigo is by far my favorite character that she's worked on. And Robert Crams might be, again, the source of this wonderful guy, but I'm sorry. <laughs> This is truly a masterful work, work of fiction. I'm going to tell you right now that Margaret Weiss Productions worked on a RPG project called Serenity. It was based on the Firefly, the Joss Whedon verse that we were all familiar with. We were disappointed it ended, but they gave us a role-playing book series. And in all honesty, the crew of the Cloud Hopper, it really feels like this is her way of continuing that great work because they get along so well and you can almost see a Wadenesque vision of a guy behind the camera filming this out. And in all honesty, this deserves that treatment. Out of all the new series that have come out in the past five to ten years, 
we're looking for something. We are begging for people to put something new on on the air. And we've been rewarded. We have Game of Thrones on HBO, which is a great show for HBO. But this here is not a great idea for HBO because this could be read to your children. You could easily spend a half hour a night reading this, two chapters a night to your kids or to your grandfather. You could take this to a old folks home and within the first week of reading this, you will have people asking you to come back and finish the book. This thing does not need to be read. It needs to be shared. And maybe that is the highest praise anybody who enjoys a good yarn can possibly say. I will tell you that right now. And I cannot wait to buy my first copy for a friend of mine who definitely needs to share this with his loved ones. Thank you so much and enjoy your time.